One of the things we want to be able to do is to estimate the sign on delta G for a given reaction. And we can do this using our chemical intuition. When we look at this, there is going to be four basic cases and it all is determined by the estimated sign on our enthalpy delta H and our entropy delta S. When we look at our base equation for delta G, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, Remember, for a spontaneous process, delta G needs to be a negative number. So in order to promote that, we want delta H to be a negative number, so that makes sense, that's exothermic. And then we want delta S to be a positive number, that makes sense, we want things to become more disordered. So if this is positive, this whole piece is going to be negative. So when delta H is negative and delta S is positive, those are the two uh, signs that we want to get a negative delta G. So because delta S is positive, the temperature doesn't matter. Delta G is going to be a negative number regardless of what temperature we're, we're at. So this is called uh, spontaneous at all temperatures and this is case one. So no matter what the temperature is, we are always going to get a negative sign on delta G. So now here we have a conflicting case. So we have the right sign on delta H, negative, but we have the wrong sign on delta S. So delta S is negative, that means the reaction is becoming less disordered. So if delta S is negative, this whole piece is uh, going to be a positive number, which is bad. And the idea is, um, as temperature increases, this whole piece, which is positive, is going to be more important and dominate eventually dominate uh, delta H. So if we want a negative delta G, we want this part to be as small as possible. So this is called spontaneous at low temperatures. As, this, as the temperature decreases, this piece becomes less important, and this piece is positive. And what becomes more important is the enthalpy, delta H, which has a negative sign. So as the temperature decreases, the entropy um, or excuse me, enthalpy becomes more important and um, so this is called spontaneous at low temperatures. So at a low temperature, this part becomes less important, the enthalpy becomes more important, enthalpy is negative, so um, at low temperatures we'll get a negative delta G. So in this situation, depending on the temperature, we can get a negative sign on our delta G or a positive sign on our delta G, is depending on the temperature. Uh, here we're looking at, at the exact opposite. Now I have the wrong sign on delta H. So delta H is positive, meaning endothermic. Um, so we don't want that. If we want a negative delta G, we don't want that. But now the sign on delta S is what we do want. So delta S is positive, which means that um, disorder is increasing. So kind of like a mirror image here, the delta S has the right sign. So if delta S is positive, and we have a negative sign, this piece is going to be negative, but my delta H is positive, that's the wrong sign, so um, at higher temperatures, this part is going to be more important. And at some point, this uh, piece is going to overtake the enthalpy. So at high temperatures, this part will become uh, the dominant piece, and the positive delta S, or this negative part of the equation, is eventually going to overtake the positive enthalpy. So this is called spontaneous at high temperatures. At high temperatures, this piece becomes dominant. Uh, the sign on this piece is gonna be negative, and at some point, it's going to overtake the positive delta H. Once again, um, depending on the temperature, the sign on delta G can be negative or positive, and it's just that at higher, temp higher temperatures, the higher the temperature, the more important this piece is going to be. So it's called spontaneous at high temperatures. Now, when we have this, both of the signs not uh, going towards a negative delta G, so my delta H is positive, in, um, endothermic, my delta S is negative, things are becoming more disordered, um, both of these pieces are going to be positive. So it doesn't matter what the temperature is, uh, this piece is going to be positive, the delta H is going to be positive, regardless of the temperature, my sign on delta G is going to be positive. So this is called non-spontaneous at all temperatures. So what we're going to do now is look at some given situations, and the idea is using our chemical intuition, we can say which one of these four cases is being applied. So the first one here, we have a basic reaction. Uh, 
three oxygens go to make two ozones. And the idea is I need to give you a method to determine the sign on delta H and delta S. So here I've told you that it is endothermic, which means that the sign on delta H is positive. Um, to find delta S, I have to look at the delta N of gas. We talked about that. That's the gaseous products minus the um, number of gaseous reactants. So I have a two here. I only have one gaseous product. So there's a two here. I only have one gaseous reactant. So there's a negative um, minus three here. Overall, delta N of gas is minus one. And the sign on delta N of gas is uh, the same as the sign on delta S. So we have a positive delta H, a negative delta S. Um, so this is going to be case four where this reaction is non-spontaneous at all temperatures. So another one is we're taking uh, liquid water and we're turning it into um, ice or solid water. And in order to do this, um, we need to in order to do this, we need to remove heat from the situation. If I want to make ice, basically, I got to put it in the freezer. So this reaction is exothermic because heat is being given off. So the sign on delta H is negative. And here also, when I look at the entropy, um, we're going from a liquid to a solid. So liquids, the atoms kind of move around and a solid, the atoms are very locked into place. So we're becoming um, less disordered. So the sign on delta S is negative. And so this reaction is going to be case two spontaneous at low temperatures. And so if you think about it, when you turn water into ice, it becomes spontaneous at low temperatures. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, here another one, I give you a reaction, I tell you it's exothermic. So if a reaction is exothermic, the sign on delta H is negative. Here again, I look at delta N of gas. I have two gaseous products, uh, one with the stoichiometric coefficient of two, one with the stoichiometric coefficient of one. Um, I only have one gaseous reactant with a stoichiometric um, coefficient of two. So two plus one is three minus two. The sign on delta S is positive one. So the sign on delta N of gas is gonna be equal to the sign on my delta S. So delta H is negative, delta S is positive, so this is called spontaneous at all temperatures, it's case one. So the last one here is if I'm turning uh, liquid water into gaseous um, water. Um, when we do this transition, we have to put energy into the system. So this is an endothermic reaction. If you think about it, if I want to boil water, if I wanna turn liquid water into steam, I have to put liquid, um, heat into it. So this is an endothermic process, delta H is positive. And with delta S, I'm going from a liquid where the atoms or the, the water molecules are actually touching each other, and I'm turning it into gaseous water where the uh, water molecules are not touching each other. So we're becoming more disordered. So delta S is positive. So in terms of the cases, this is case three, spontaneous at high temperatures. And so this makes sense too, that um, if I'm turning liquid water into uh, steam, basically gaseous water, this becomes spontaneous at high temperatures. If I heat up the, the, the liquid water, at some point I'm gonna reach a temperature and that temperature is uh, gonna cause this reaction or phase change to become spontaneous.